What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here on Hobby Hump Day, <laughs> the literal second best day of the week. Today, we're going to do a tutorial on showing you how to put together the Leviathan Dreadnought from Forge World and how to magnetize it because it's um, it's a little tricky. It's not too hard because basically the, the arms, which you see here in the dark gray, or the tops of the arms, the shoulders, come with the actual model itself and then the pieces to actually magnetize come with the actual parts that you buy which are shaded in the light gray right here from Forge World. So if you set up this part uh, easily then you can magnetize your stuff super easy as you buy all the arms or if you get all the arms or if you you know want to put them on uh, different uh, different left and right um, options basically or if you want to do like the close combat over here the weapon over here it just kind of depends you know but this uh, this is a really cool model itself and there's actually a lot of uh, ideas on how to pose it you know moving with like one leg up or one leg down it's kind of got that whole like um, AT AT feel like it's kind of kind of like lumbering along but like one leg is up and one leg is down and it's a it's just a really cool kit and you can model it I was actually wrong on my unboxing you can actually model this thing uh, a myriad of different ways, which I found pretty interesting uh, once I got in there and started messing with it. And there's also a way to leave off some of these parts so that you can airbrush them and then glue them on later, like the knee plates and like this piece up here, this uh, middle shoulder section right here as well you can leave off, and also the head. This actually locks the head into place here. So this is a really cool kit. I think they go for about $104 right now, complete with weapons from Forge World, which it really isn't that bad. I mean, for something from 30K, that's so good. It's not gonna probably see a lot of use in competitive 40K, but it's a really sweet model, and I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of these guys on the tabletop. So let's jump right into it and check out today's tutorial. All right, so first off, grab your instructions because you're going to need these things. It's not a complicated kit, but there is some gotchas, as you can see by exploded view. There is definitely a couple of multiple options that you're going to want to try. So here you can see in the instructions, basically, the yellow is where you mate parts to. The green is the active part. The blue is uh, basically options, the way you can mount stuff. And then on the back, the same, basically, green is the active part, and they show you the yellow planes to where to put the stuff. And uh, blue being an optional part of the uh, launcher on the back. Right there in red, you need to get rid of those gates, because if you don't, um, <laughs> well, your torso won't fit on top of each other. Now, I noticed uh, this Forge World kit was covered in, basically, resin release. And I don't normally wash the parts separately before I get into... Um, you know working on a project so what I wanted to do was just to start gluing it together and there you can see the ridges to basically where to lock in uh, the left and right parts of the torso onto the center chest piece there this is very easy uh, super locks in it's good to go but you can kind of tell that um, it wasn't exactly holding as well as I had liked and that's because basically there was all that mold release so what I did was I started scoring the parts because I, I didn't want to wash all the parts ahead of time wait for the drying I like to do it at the end uh, very gently of course with a toothbrush so here you can see I'm basically going to before before I try to attach it I'm grabbing an exacto blade and I'm just gonna start scoring which is basically etching a bunch of small scratches into the parts nothing too major just something to give the glue um, a little bit of extra surface area to attach itself to it helps with uh, strength and stability it also helps with thermodynamics like if you leave it in the car it gives a little extra space to swell up or contract depending on the temperature super easy stuff but in this instance it seems like Forge World's coming coming out with a lot more uh, mold release on the releases here I'm doing the same thing with the areas that the back exhaust stacks are going to interface with on the new torso assembly and then hitting all those parts right there very carefully because I'm working very closely to my fingers with a very sharp exacto blade so you got to have a lot of control um, and very precision cuts you know very very quickly obviously this is spread uh, sped up so you know it looks it looks a little quicker than it is I don't know if I could actually uh, score parts that fast so here I'm adding my glue um, just your normal CA uh, thick I kind of use uh, I think it's the thicker glue I use on the Forge World stuff I feel like it just gives it a better um, uh, kind of like a quicker bond time but also a stronger bond just in general than the stuff I would use for like uh, say working with plastics which I don't 
a lot of times I just used a plastic glue. So there you can see that it didn't quite give it enough time to, to hold and then I'm just going to let it lay it flat while I get the rest of the parts ready to go. Then I come back, it's all glued and nice and solid there, checking all, checking all the surfaces, make sure everything's flush. And right there you can see those little trenches or sockets where the optional chest weapons can go. So there they are and I'm basically sizing them in there to just to see how they work, see if there's any gotchas, like do I need to put them in now or can I magnetize them later. I didn't show you how to magnetize them in this video because I figure most people are just going to glue them in and say they're kind of whatever. Um, for me personally, I'm not sure if I'm going to make this a Blood Angels Dreadnought or an Iron Warriors Dreadnought. So if it's Blood Angels, they're probably going to get swapped out for the Assault Cannons they can take. If it's Iron Warriors, I'll probably um, I'm actually not sure what I'm going to do at this point. I still haven't decided. <laughs> uh, so here's the leg assembly parts here. And I'm basically just sizing it up, trimmed all the flash off, pre-scored them. They're all good to go. And what's nice about this is they got two different leg pieces. You can kind of see how they go together and form this little uh, kind of system. And then the underneath of the shin pads right there, you can see they got a lot of range of motion for the little ball joint that's on top of the foot pads. So you can basically have one foot either up in the air kicking or one foot pushing down, like supporting like you just landed, or one foot pushing off. So it gives you lots of options and that center groin uh, armor, I guess hip joint kind of thing really gives you uh, extra posability because it's got that 360 kind of socket type deal and it's it's pretty it's pretty deep socket so you can get some some motion there which you kind of see what I'm going to do I kind of have them spaced out and cantered so that left or that right leg there is going to be pushed down so I'm basically holding it as I'm gluing the other part with my ring finger as I'm gluing the rest of it I'm still holding it the, the bottom with my ring finger there just to give it that extra support and then I'm gluing the uh, the knee joints on right there just locking it in getting my get my ideal uh, positioning so I'm pushing it forward I'm getting an idea I kind of hold it for a few seconds just let it dry there you can kind of see what I did with both of the legs and now I'm going to attach it to the to the uh, the groin plate or the groin armor uh, hip the 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 BAC of the actual dreadnought itself and um, just dabbing it off a little bit got, got a little crazy with the glue because it's a you know it's a hole so it fell right through of course and there it is I just uh, locked it in let it dry for a little bit and it's all good to go and it got that nice positioning he's pushing off and pressing down with one leg kind of at that little uh, cantered kind of uh, waist position and there's the knee pad that's optional you don't have to glue it down at this point um, I'm not gonna because I'm gonna probably paint it a different color now this is really interesting so you got this two-part torso and I realized once I started Started looking at it and working with the positioning here that it needs to be basically pointed down because this is a very tall model and so it needs to be pointed down like that so that you can basically lock in the weapons kind of pointing out straight forward or I ended up having one pointed kind of down and one pointed kind of out so it can twist and kind of do this like stepping forward and kind of raking fire kind of motion as well, the dynamic pose I was envisioning and here I basically locked this in and then I realized oh you can glue down the front part too so I pulled it out and added a little bit more uh, more glue to the whole assembly there and then just locked it down gave it a few seconds you know it's all it's all freshly uh, scored so it's exposing that nice non um, mold release resin underneath it now after this is all glued together I'm going to take it and wash it um, with some joy soap or just something that degreasing um, dish soap and a nice uh, soft bristled toothbrush just to get all that crap off there but here's the uh, the top plate I, I it took a while to get it to lock in it does lock in even if you glue the left and right halves of the torso on but make sure that you glue down the head first again parts I'm gonna paint separate so I didn't glue them down right now and here you can kinda of get an idea of how the arms are gonna go together as I check the positioning what parts I'm gonna magnetize so I kinda of get this uh, this grandiose plan of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a steel plate on the weapon mount itself and here you can see me scoring uh, the two halves of the uh, uh, the weapon arm here and then I'm going to glue those together so I can put this steel plate or tin plate 
um, on the actual weapons because there's four different weapons and they're probably going to put out more. So I'd rather just add a steel plate to each weapon than have to keep adding new magnets, which there doesn't seem to be room for, to be honest. So I'm going to add this flat tin plate and then I'm going to put the magnet itself in the torso, little stubby shoulders that basically cut off it like mid elbow kind of. Um, and those are going to be, they can be whatever polarity because they're still going to attract the, the steel uh, the steel or tin plate itself so there you can kind of see I'm gonna add in some more glue to add the weapon hot the ammo hopper for uh, this weapon arm right there and I'm gonna hold it for a while because it's a little um, a little precariously uh, kind of wobbly so I just want to make sure that it glues all together so I hold it right there some nice tension for about I'd say about two minutes and let it dry but there it is I realized that I might have to uh, work on the front a little bit with the heat gun and just kind of work it out to get it nice and straight but that's that's down the road I've already done a video on that make sure you check it out on the channel here uh, to see how to work with uh, bending forge world resin so here's um here's the other weapon mount which uh, you can kind of see me going in scoring it's super easy to do it's just it's just a part of part of hobbying really um, when you have the surfaces that don't exactly mate and you want to give it extra strength it's the best way to go so there it is just gluing it together um, super easy putting that one aside right there and just kind of letting it now here's a pro tip you can tell that my uh, my tips all like super gobbed up with glue so you take your exacto blade you flip it around to the dull edge and you just kind of start scraping like you're you know like you're scrimshawing a uh, uh, an apple or a bone or just basically you know just getting in there and and scraping along the nozzle so it gets all that dried glue off and you're not cutting into the actual plastic tubing that dispenses the glue so you, you no harm no foul and all of the pla or all the dry glue is just coming right off and then if you need to just you know slice a little bit off the tip right there um, if it you know if it's got down too bad and there you can see I probably got rid of probably about a a good sixteenth of an inch of glue of just dry glue right there just while you know I was waiting for parts to drive so here's the assembly on the arms and you can see there that's where we're gonna attach the magnet and that piece right there that's gonna attach to the weapon arms themselves I'm gonna slice down now this it's a little it's a little tricky i um, grab that bone saw and now make sure watch your fingertips you see there I'm actually kind of bear clawing it you know kind of like you do in the kitchen I learned that from juice at barely tabletop cooking you know it's called a bear claw you don't want to you don't want to leave your fingertips out to get actually sliced off now speaking of slicing things off don't do this don't ever scrape with an exacto blade towards you my thumb I don't know if you can see it on the camera there but my thumb is significantly scarred from you know just basically cutting myself accidentally why I stupidly cut towards myself so never do that don't be a stupid like me so there I'm scoring the part and then I grabbed a piece of tin which you can get from Lowe's it comes in those uh, latex uh, plastic uh, latex roller uh, kind of um, little trays that you use for you know painting walls and such you just cut it down you can kind of see the basic shape of the tray itself but be careful this is this is straight up steel or you know tin it will cut the shit out of your hand if you're not careful and then that's a whole tetanus situation another problem with this too is and you can see me scoring the, the piece of tin here because why not it helps it bond with the uh, with the resin part so I'm just going back and forth like a tic-tac-toe uh, hashtag there and uh, just lining it up adding some glue we're gonna put it on there um, the problem with this is that it's not entirely flat as you're gonna see here in a second when I grab my sharpie and I'm trying to mash it down and make it flush with um, the, the surface here because the surface might not be a hundred percent flush itself because I planed it by hand um, not entirely with the bone saw here so I kind of took it off camera there and I kind of mashed it over the corner of my plastic work table and what that did was a similar effect to taking a, a dollar bill and running it on the edge of the coin machine you know to or the the dollar bill intake on a soda machine to get it to read it and basically it helps mash it down here I basically lined up my where I'm gonna drill out my hole for my magnet in the the dreadnought arm itself now my precise measuring wasn't so good with my, my guess with the sharpie so what I did was I came in I looked at it I put the hole in and I'm like mm, I think that's wrong so I put a little hole in there and then I dug it out and kind of redid it with the with the actual exacto there and then I go in and I start getting really in on it and getting that nice good pilot hole that's square up in the whole section here so I can bring in my drill bit 
Make sure you set this on low. You don't want to drill right through your part. You don't want to torque it out of your hand and then lose it. You want to be very careful on the lowest power you can. You're going to make a one quarter inch hole on very slow speed. You can see it there. Even at two times speed of the video, it is going very slow. Take it slow. Don't F up your part. Now, I take it off camera there because I have to be even more super careful than I would normally be. And I just wanted to make sure I got a nice, uh, good start to it so I can get in here and show you guys. Now, you can kind of see here I'm doing a dry fit with the magnet. There it is. It looks like it sizes up well. But I can tell I, I have something up because the edge uh, is coming off. And then look at this. I couldn't even tell when I was doing it, but I am not perpendicular to the surface here. So I'm going to rip off. I'm going to shear off that side support right there as you can see and uh, it fell down on the ground there which is no big deal we got plastic putty it's great stuff I'll, I'll rebuild that surface in to protect that magnet on the outside and also you know hold some paint here in the future so there I just put my put my glue in there threw in the magnet and it doesn't even matter which side I'm using because uh, the other halves are all going to be tin so it's going to stick to whichever side I use which is uh, super great you know for us so they're just getting in there and building up a nice surface I'm going to come in and trim it later uh, with a scraper so you know it's going to it's going to actually get down underneath the seam too which is great because it's in its liquid um, semi-solid form kind of right now so this is really great stuff if you don't have some yet it's Vallejo plastic putty it's a really good product it's way better than liquid green stuff. It's just night and day better than this stuff here. So just working the surface a little bit with uh, with a little wet rag there, and we're just going to let it dry. So now that our, our steel or tin plate is dry, we're going to come in here with some smaller uh, shears, not the tin strips you're going to need or tin, tin snips that you're going to need to cut down that uh, metal from that you know roller tray, that paint roller tray. These are smaller kind of craft uh, type deal. And I'm just gonna get in there and just kind of um, you know trim it all up, make it nice and flush. And there you can see super powerful magnet in the top. It's gonna hold that weapon arm. And in case they come out with more heavier weapon arms, it should still be able to hold that weight. So we're just gonna have to glue that joint onto the weapon itself. Now there's a little piece right here that you're gonna see it's a back grill for the arm. And it goes right there. You can kind of tell by the back of the shape. It just locks right into that recess. It's not on the instruction manual. I emailed Forge World about it. They said they're going to update uh, their instructions. Now I drilled out a quarter inch dowel into the uh, the waist right there and up into the actual torso itself um, just so I didn't have to use the, that quarter inch magnet on the torso because I was worried that it would uh, shred it. So there you can see the two different weapon options, one pointed down, one pointed out. So it gives me some options to for assembly and for posing and all sorts of different stuff. Um, and then, you know, the head and everything will lock right on the top. I'll paint that later and just uh, slide it in. So it's a really great uh, model to work with. I think, you know, hopefully this tutorial helps you and shows you the ways to make yours uh, a modular masterpiece uh, just like this one here. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.